Hey everyone, this is Mike and these are listening to episode 129 of the Business Bootcamp podcast. And today we are answering a question that's come in probably about three or four times in the past month, so I wanted to address it. Not this question specifically, but in this general uh, topic of starting a business while you are doing shift work. So when some people, it's, it's often common in construction, logging, mining, things of that sort. And so if you're in that industry, heads up. If you know someone in that industry, heads up. Um, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be good. Um, first of all, though, thank you to our sponsor, LandscapeBusinessCourse.com. The pre-sale is going to be ending here in a few weeks because we're almost done the post-edit on all of the videos. We actually ended up firing the post-production uh, company that was editing all of the course videos because they were too slow. And so we've taken it in-house, and so we are going, we're pounding through the modules, and we're going to be done the post-production process here pretty soon, which means the pre-sale is going to be gone on the course. So if you are interested on uh, starting or growing your landscaping business, definitely want to check out landscapebusinesscourse.com. We have a webinar coming up next Tuesday, and so if you are interested in how, to, we, we're going to talk about, we're going to do a live webinar on how to uh, essentially it, we're going to talk about the five things that keep small businesses small, especially service-based businesses. So if you have a business, you'd like to jump on there and ask some questions live and in person, it's going to be great. I think it's Tuesday at 9 o'clock. So check out landscapebusinesscourse.com. Now today, our question got emailed in. And remember, if you have a question on how to start, grow, or save your business, check on that, ch go on over to businessbootcamppodcast.com, which by the way, we've hit our two-year marker on the podcast. Very cool. And by the way, Starting December, I mean January 1st, 2017, we're going to be going to two episodes per week. And you say, why the change? Because right now we're only doing one. We're going to go to two, and that's because we have a sponsor, and they want two, two uh, episodes a week. So that's going to be cool. Looking forward to that. It's a return sponsor. They, their program worked out really good, and they want to join us for three months. Freshbooks.com slash bootcamp for more information. Okay, so... Uh, let's see here. We got a question coming in from Andrew. And remember, you can email the questions in or just go to the, on, uh, on the website, businessbootcamppodcast.com. Andrew wrote in. I'm going to read the question. It's fairly long, but it is good. Here we go. Hello, Mike. First of all, thank you for taking the time to read my email. I'm writing to you from Alberta, Canada, where I currently work in the mining industry on a two-week-on, two-weeks-off rotation. I make anywhere from 125000 to $150,000 per year currently. Though the money is okay, I really am not passionate about what I do. I have been brainstorming the idea of starting a residential moving company, possibly commercial as well in the future. I have some past moving experience, but have a few questions that I like to ask. During my two weeks on, I work about $100 a week, so I would have very little time to run a business and could virtually take on zero jobs, but I have two weeks entirely free during my days off. If I begin to take on clients, how would turning down every client requesting service while I'm away working for two weeks affect the business? How would you go about working on this problem? It would just be myself and I plan to hire a guy on as needed. As having a full-time as here, I'm sorry. As having a full-time employee is not plausible at this point, could I hire a worker on a cash basis or could that get me in trouble down the road if he gets hurt, etc.? Would he be covered by my business insurance? I would like to say as well that I would not be purchasing a truck right away. I have the cash to do so, but I would like to rent until I know the work is actually there. Initially, I would just buy all the equipment and supplies needed. What do you think about this? Sorry for all the questions. I would love to hear some ideas about how to start this business off on the right foot. I have been listening to your podcast for a while and really enjoy listening to what you have to talk about. Thank you for continuing to do amazing work. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate that. So, um, I do have... A few, uh, by the way, Andrew, you are already signed up for the podcast on next Tuesday, I believe it is. Um, no, you aren't. Sorry, I'm getting confused with someone else I was talking to. Kurt, if you're listening, Kurt was emailing me just right before I got this question, and uh, he's on the, pot, on the webinar for next Tuesday. But, Andrew, you would also benefit from something, like, even, like, even though, if you're listening to the podcast and you're like, well, Landscape Business Course, Mike does this course for, pot, um, for landscapers, but if I, you're kind of wondering if I, if you join the webinar, the free webinar, if you'd actually get any value, yes. I'd say like 80% of that content that we share in the webinar uh, is 
really applicable to any small business, number one. And number two, you can ask questions at the end concerning your business. So that's that. Uh, so the reason I mentioned that, Andrew, is because some of the stuff we talk about in the webinar is has to do with some of this stuff. But I do have some specific uh, comments that I would say. And for everyone out there working shift work or even just part-time people who already have a... a a full-time job and they're just trying to start their business on the side for now yes you can do it and it is possible um, you asked about you know doing your your job for two weeks and then doing the, the, the business for two weeks that's definitely possible what's nice about what you do is you can schedule the work uh, for the times that you are home so usually people know are gonna be calling you I would imagine several weeks in advance before before they're gonna move However, usually I would imagine, again, I don't know for sure, that they would probably call with a specific date in mind or a date already predetermined that they're going to move. So it's not like you can be like, well, can we move it to this day? Usually they have a pretty good idea of when they want to move. And so you're either going to have to accept or reject the job. And as so the positive part, though, like I was saying, is you can schedule these jobs and know exactly when you're going to be home. Or if someone's flexible, you say, hey, if you're literally leaving tomorrow, you could say, hey, we're booked out two weeks, and then just give them the, the next possible date that you will be home. And yes, you're going to lose some jobs, people who are calling you uh, the week before they move and being like, hey, can I get you to come out? And you're like, no, I'm going to be out of town, but you just tell them, I would just tell them, no, sorry, we're booked out two weeks. That's how I would phrase it. I wouldn't phrase the, hey, I'm going to be gone out of town or whatever. I would just say that you're booked out for two weeks. Uh, otherwise, if you have a few more days in town, you say, hey, no, it has to be either like tomorrow or the next day. Otherwise, it, we're, we, ha we don't have another available time for two more weeks. So that's how I would phrase it. Now, as far as whether you do that, or you could, if you found someone that you could trust, to, that you could hire, um, if they were comfortable enough, you could probably set them up with the job before you left. Maybe go do a walkthrough of the property or the house that you're going to be moving them. And then just have that employee go there on that day while you're out of town and actually do the moving work. And so the, the problem with this is, is especially the fact that you want to do cash basis for your employee. When you start talking about cash basis, I don't recommend it. I, I would do it if I was like you're in your position with the solopreneur, you're kind of by yourself. And then if I was hiring like my brother or someone I, not even someone I knew really well, it'd have to be a, like like a, a sibling or an immediate family member. And the reason for that is you just never know what's going to happen. If someone gets hurt and all of that, there are certain laws about your, your having a family business. So it kind of, it works in your favor a little bit. But if you're going to have someone in a uniform, which you should have, um, if you're going to have someone driving a company truck, even if it's not owned by you, but if you're renting it, if you're going to have them, you tell them a specified time to be at a job, those are all things that are going to essentially eliminate you from being allowed to do a 1099 subcon so, uh, like a subcontractor. And so that would then mean you need to do a W-2, which is an employee. And so I think it's probably less than you think as far as hiring someone. Yes, you're going to be paying a few dollars, like probably $2 extra more an hour for L&I. Uh, and then you're going to be spending some time doing some payroll and things like that. But I think I think maybe for now, if you can keep it where you're doing it with a family member for now, and then when you get really busy, um, or if they start doing jobs by themselves, I would recommend getting them on W-2, getting a bookkeeper to do it for you, or just use QuickBooks uh, payroll and run them through and... It's a couple dollars more an hour, but it's it's a hurdle that you kind of kind of cross in order to be grow and and so yes, your profit margin is going to take a hit, and it's kind of annoying to have to pay that money out. Uh, but I would highly recommend everyone out there to really cons reconsider or think through the whole subcontractor thing um, and try and do 1099s for your employees. If they're showing up in uniforms, if you're telling them what time to show up, if they're driving company vehicles, using company tools and equipment, anything to do with like that. You can get a lot of trouble with the IRS when you start claiming that um, on your t on your tax returns. And then you can also get in big trouble if they get hurt and then they go to the hospital and they, and 
the they're gonna, the first question they're gonna ask is where you hurt on the job, and if they say yes and they give your business name, you're hooped. Uh, really, you are. So, uh, and reason I can tell you that is because literally two weeks ago I had to fire someone because they joined our team, went through the whole process of application, looked fine, and then essentially they wanted to get their back treated. They had a pre-existing condition and decided to go to... They, essentially, they worked for a company before that didn't have all the registration and all the LNI set up and weren't paying into the system. So when they started working for us, they used it as an opportunity to essentially fake the fact that they got hurt, go to the hospital, and get it paid for by LNI which makes our, makes our rates go up. So that, that's, you know, that's just part of being a business owner. You can cry, you can mope about it, you can uh, become a pro... I, I put this on um, Twitter the other day, uh, that uh, pro protesting... Well, protesters accept the role of a victim. And so I, I, I refuse to complain about things like L&I and claims. And it's part of business, it's part of having employees, and ha having employees is part of being a successful business owner. And so, it's just part of the game. And obviously, I want to. I, I since then I've even upped our game on the onboarding process for our team and everything, and making sure that that we're gonna weed more of those people out. And it's not like I'm gonna try to do that again. But I just have to realize things like that's part of the game, man. Like the bigger your problems are, the bigger success you're probably having. People that are having hundred dollar issues, they're probably not hugely financially successful um if you're having million dollar problems you're probably you're probably set um and so i look for big problems because where big problems are is big opportunity and you're probably having big success so if you're <laughs> it's not to celebrate your problems and celebrate when bad stuff happens but the bigger the problem it probably means you're bi the bigger success the bigger upside to the risk that you're taking and so uh when it comes to employees that's how you have to look at it you have to look at it as you're thinking long term. You're thinking about the growth of your company, and 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 you, Andrew, should be thinking like, hey, I'm not thinking about one employee or one truck. I'm thinking in five years when I'm not working in the mining thing, and I have two or three trucks of my own with five or six guys. So if you can keep that in mind and really get the goals of where you want to go, you know, your first employee paying him L and I and and paying him payroll and stuff like that won't be as hard as it seems as if you just start looking at it as a basis of, oh, I had to pay this guy extra $500 because he's on payroll. Um, that's my thoughts on that. I would not do 1099s if, if, you're, if you have to fish the system. Obviously, you can subcontract, like we subcontract for sprinkler irrigation stuff uh, and the like, uh, and bigger contracting jobs, but there are a lot of rules because... And I would just play it safe if I was if you had any question about it because you can get in big trouble with L and I if someone gets hurt and you're not covered. And no, your business insurance will not cover the person if they are not an employee. So if they are subcontracted, that means that they need to have their own license and thus their own insurance. So if they got hurt in the job, that would cover it. But if you, if they go to, go to the hospital and they say that you got they got hurt under your business name, they will not be covered. And your business insurance will not cover it because you, they are not technically an employee. So you're just going to get in a lot of trouble, I just promise you that. Like, even if your insurance covers it, they're either going to knock you off or come after you, you know, make you personally liable. So I wouldn't do that. Um, anyways, I, 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 I dwell on that for a long time. But the other thing too is, Andrew, you mentioned about turning down business. If tur turning down business is your biggest problem, you have it pretty good. <laughs> um, and I think... I think a lot of people worry about what are they going to do if they get too much business. You just need to focus on generating more. Like that'd be a great problem to have, where you are jamming pack, like packing in as many jobs as you can in those two weeks. Like that's when I would quit your job. Mining is when you literally are packing your two weeks home until it's like you come home and work a hundred hours a week, and you're like, oh my goodness, this is crazy. That's when you should quit your mining job. And so I wouldn't worry about turning down people. I wouldn't worry about getting too much. Lead, too many leads or too many calls. I wouldn't worry about that. I think too many people focus on that. It's just like, just you're 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 that I mean you're doing something right, and so um, I think that's a good thing if you're turning down people. Um, if we've done when we're booked out sometimes four or five weeks, I have no uh, apologies, and I'm very happy that we're booked four or five weeks out. 
because it means that we have a great inflow. Obviously, that also means that you should be. It's a great time to expand and get another employee and more equipment and become more efficient. That's another thing to look at. However, uh, it's never a bad thing to have too many jobs to where you have to turn them down. And so that's kind of my two cents on it all, Andrew. By the way, great idea, the whole moving thing. People hate moving. Um, they, they are either going to love you or they are going to hate you because they are stressed out. And so you'll find any time in a person's life when they are stressed out is um, a time when you get the most passionate customers. And that can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. Uh, so like for instance when we when we do landscaping for people who just bought a house and they're moving in I realize that it's stressful and so either a you're gonna do a lot of good for them and they're going to really like your service and rave about you on social media and you're gonna be really happy because they're in the whole mode of like giving reviews and seeing like about installation companies and appliances and like all they're doing all this stuff with service-based businesses they're really in that mode of like reviews and thinking about service and the the negative part number two of thing that can happen is that turns on you and you do a okay job or like a, de a good job but they for some reason figure out something they don't like because and it was nothing to do with you it's just because they're stressed out because of moving so um you're but it's also in those times you can get high profit margin by offering great service i say this this analogy a million times that I'm about to do right now and if you can't see me on the podcast sorry I'm on video here on Facebook and uh, on YouTube um, I do this a million times but if you could get this in your head it would help it's like every day I think about this equation that I've made up value and price okay when someone is super stressed out and they're looking for high value and when, they, when I say high value and we're talking about moving, I'm talking about people that they know are going to show up on time, they're going to be professional, they're not going to have clammy employees that they're kind of worried about having in their house and around their kids. Um, they don't mind the employees handling their stuff. Everything is on time, efficient, quick, safe. All of that's in order. Um, that's value. Now here goes the equation. This is the problem in small businesses. The equation is this, when value, ex value exceeds price, a transaction takes place. Now what too many people do in order to get this equation to balance out is drop price so that value is higher than price and the transaction will take place. However, your margin will be very small. Now what you, could, what you need to focus on in your small business is raising value, thus being able to keep your prices high and creating a larger net profit margin. That's what you need to focus on. And that's what I think as we we're talking about moving and people who are stressed out and people who are passionate at this certain critical junction of their life or their year or whatever. Um, if you're dealing with people like uh, um, people who are sick around times when they are uh, go, have to go to the hospital a lot, their family, death, uh, weddings, all of those times, if your businesses are geared around those life events, you have to realize that you have a very passionate customer and that can be a very good thing or a very bad thing. Focus on adding value and the person in there in that situation is willing to pay the extra dollar in order to get the right value. Get the, get the someone that's going to show up on time and all of the things that are around your company and your business, your industry, they're looking for value. So many people so many small business owners focus so much on price, they forget that people buy because of the value. They want something done. They're not doing, buying it because you're the cheapest. They want the thing done. They want the service. They want the moving. They want the, the, the lawn mowed. They want the, the house cleaned, whatever. That's what they're looking for. Okay. So what you got to do is do that so good that price doesn't really come into their mind. Or at least you can raise the price to what you need it to be to get a high profit margin and funnel that money into growing your business. So that's my two cents for you, Andrew. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm interested in people who are starting businesses while employed, especially people in shift work. It's very, it's very interesting because you literally go from 100-hour weeks. Like, What's cool, Andrew, and what I like about shift work people is they're used to putting in 90, 100 hours a week. So when they come back to reality, it's like zero hours, they're off. It's kind of like it hurts their head. 
but they're not they're, they're when they do quit their job they're not afraid to put the hundred hours in that's required to grow a business when you do go full time with a business and so it's interesting and uh, I want to help those people because they deserve it and a lot of those people do get tired of their job even if they're making great money usually if you're on shift work like that you're making good money like 125 150 thousand you're in the top five percent you know five, probably top eight percent of America in as far as earning and yet you're not passionate about it it doesn't get you enthused it doesn't keep you you don't listen to podcasts about mining I'll tell you that <laughs> and so uh, so uh, thank you Andrew keep me updated and if you anyone out there else has a question on how to start grow or save your business check out businessbootcamppodcast.com I want to say a big thank you real quick to everyone that's been writing very nice emails and reviews on the podcast on iTunes and reviews on, on even the book on Amazon I'm not saying that because I want everyone to go and do it it just I really appreciate that the emails that come in and people have said hey I've listened to you past year the business has done you know X amount more because of episode 100 and whatever or episode 50 uh, and uh, and we we've, we've had huge growth and we're so thankful and it's changed our business and so I really am thankful for that that's the reason why we've stuck around for two years and have 130 uh, podcasts now episodes and so I want to say thank you thank you for sharing your time and I appreciate it so much again this is Mike Andes this is was this was episode 129 on the Business Bootcamp Podcast. Until next time, I'll see you then.